Welcome back to the fourth episode of the Frequently Asked Questions series about the Daegu Mosque issue. In this episode, we address an important question. Is this opposition to the reconstruction of Daegu Mosque the only case of Islamophobia in Korea? Many people have asked us why our mosque is facing so much opposition when there are other mosques already present in Korea. What makes our situation different? The answer to this question lies in the role of third parties which we discussed in episodes 2 and 3 of this series. These groups need someone to fight for them because they can't oppose openly and legally. If they were to obstruct the construction themselves without involving neighbors, they would not be able to defend their actions in court nor would the majority of Korean people accept their opposition. In our case, they were fortunate that some of our neighbors with whom we had been praying since 2014 fell into their delusions and started fighting us for the third party's agenda rather than due to any genuine concerns. For those interested in researching this topic further, I will provide hints of other events that connect the role of these groups, such as National Action for Refugee Countermeasures and People's Sovereignty Action in promoting hate against Muslims in South Korea. These groups have opposed the halal food industry. Now why would they oppose halal food projects? Food projects never harm local Koreans. These organizations also opposed the establishment of the halal industry in 2020. And not only then, but they also opposed the halal food complex project in 2016 which ultimately led to its cancellation. Researchers can explore more on these topics to find the connection. These groups were also involved in the Yamni refugees issue, trying to create hate against Muslims through that issue. Another example is the Muslim campground issue in Yeonchan, where the same groups blocked the construction of a campground meant for Muslims. They were also involved in the Afghan refugees issue when the families of Afghan workers who helped South Korean authorities in Afghanistan arrived in Korea. These groups created hurdles for them too. Investigating the involvement of these groups in various instances of Islamophobia provides a comprehensive understanding of the patterns and discriminatory attitudes towards Muslims in South Korea. In our next episode, we will discuss the disappointing role of the law enforcement authorities in this issue. Stay tuned.